take this away, okay? Failure is not an end. It's actually just the beginning, okay? You see failure as something to be feared. It's something to be learned from. Every time we fail, we have an opportunity to reflect on what went wrong. And we can do things differently the next time. It's actually only through failure that we can discover our strengths and weaknesses and actually improve ourselves. Failure is necessary. And it's not just about personal growth, but failure can also lead to innovation and progress. That's important. Many of the world's greatest inventions and advancements were born out of failures. For example, Thomas Edison, right? Everyone knows him. He failed thousands of times. Before he got that light bulb, it took him a lot of failures, okay? So every time we, every time he failed, he learned, he adapted, he sculpted, he moved on to the next thing, okay? If he didn't do this, if he didn't go through all these failures, he wouldn't have found the solution, okay? So the next time you fail, don't give up. Use it as an opportunity to reflect, learn, and grow. You know, who knows, maybe your failure will lead to something great. But remember, success isn't measured by how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up and keep going. And he's here. He is here. Cristiano has entered the building. Welcome, wherever you are, to the Old Trafford Theatre. Yes, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Sculpted Podcast. I am here with Nick and Val, and today we're going to be talking about failure. Now, most importantly, we're going to be talking about why failure is inevitable, why it's necessary, and reasons why you can bounce back, and how you should bounce back from failure. So without further ado, Nick, I'd love for you to tell me what you think about failure and why it's necessary. Yeah, guys, so basically, as Ash just said there, that's what today's episode about. Uh, we'll go. We'll be going through many different uh, kind of topics and just why you know why failure is necessary and and all people will feel failure in in any aspect of life uh, i'm sure val and ash you can both attribute to having felt a failure before like everything you do just doesn't seem to work out well that's kind of what we're talking about today and we're going to be talking about why failure is actually a good thing and in fact it's necessary if you want to learn and grow you know you, you see when things don't work out the way you want them to it gives us an opportunity to analyze what went wrong and we can actually learn from our mistakes. It's it's only through failure that we can truly understand what doesn't work. Now, when we understand what doesn't work, that's what allows us to understand what does work. But it's not just about learning what doesn't work. Failure allows us to discover what does work. As I said, when we try new things and take risks, we may stumble and discover what actually does work. When we try new things and take those risks, inevitably something, you will see a change. And when we see that change, you will stumble across that success. Then we can build upon that success and continue to grow. So don't be afraid to fail. Embrace it as an opportunity to learn and grow. And remember that true failure is giving up. As long as you keep trying and learning from mistakes, you'll eventually find success, which is what this episode is about today. We're going to encourage you to seek failure seek opportunities to grow and to learn from these mistakes because without these you won't know what's wrong and you won't know what's right so the only way to find out what is right is by going through the wrong now in today's episode i'm going to be talking about my personal failures and how i have strategized to grow and improve from them to be better off for having them and we're going to be going through val's failures and ash's failures We're going to be giving you insights into other people's failures, more people that you might be specific with, such as celebrities, top-notch footballers, people who are at the top. Everyone fails. Everyone fails. It's inevitable. But the people who deal with the failures are the best are the ones that we see at the top today. Now, Val, anything from you before we uh, get to the first topic? Yes. Uh, One anecdote from me or one one, uh, personal opinion of mine is Failure is perceived as too negatively in today's world. What I mean by that is we are always talking about oh, failure is bad or failure is this, blah, blah, blah. I believe failure is the first point of realizing uh, that you need something to change. Or for example, the first opportunity to go one step further ahead. So I had many failures in my life already where I think 
the failures made me who I am today. Yeah. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with you, Val. I think that today, um, you know, failures can actually really build you as an individual. They actually set the path of which you decide to go down. You can be perceiving a failure as something as a full stop, or you could be seeing a failure as, you know, a break or a pause or even something like an accelerator into the next journey of a lot of your life. And that's uh, the first part that we kind of want to talk about, which is why failure is in a, failure is inevitable and why you should embrace it and to create in strategies to bounce back from them. This is what's important. So guys, today we need to reiterate the importance of inevitability because as we are all humans, Ash, Val, myself, we are all humans, right? Failure will happen. We are not wired to be perfect. That is something that's unfortunately just not a reality. We are fail. We are programmed to fail, right? But what we can do is help minimize those failures. And when we do fail, create strategies to bounce back from them. So Val and Ash, if you both can give me, let's start with Ash. Give me literally today one way that you failed. Uh, yeah, so... What happened today? So today I went to work like a normal day. Um, I think even this morning, I, I think I stayed in bed a bit too long. So I was, I was over with my fiance, you know, I stayed the night at her place. Um, I woke up, I was meant to go to university this morning. Um, but as I woke up, I just decided, you know, maybe not today. I laid back in bed for the three hours and I woke up and I realized like that's gone against everything that I kind of planned for the day. So it kind of totally ruined up my day, totally messed it up. So I had to reiterate and change sort of adjust to the failure that I made. So what I had to do was I sat at my desk for, I think what? I think I got out of my bed at eight o'clock this morning. I didn't leave until three until I had to go to work in the nighttime. So I literally had to sit there because I made this one choice in the morning that completely changed the progress I was supposed to make. And I had to adjust to that sort of shift in the plans that I had. And I actually didn't get as much work done as I wanted to. So obviously I'm a bit disappointed in that. But I guess it just shows like, say you fail or you choose the wrong decision, the failures that you make will kind of shape you into the sort of the plans that you want to make. So what Ash experienced then was he woke up and the first thing that he decided to do was fail. Okay. Now this is more of a conscious decision for Ash, but this is as Ash just gave then he showed that this actually set the tone for his day. Now. If Ash didn't decide to do this, now for Ash at least, maybe this is something that is a pattern that he's trying to rewire in his brain. It's a pattern where he's trying to start putting it into a new positive spin. Now for him, maybe eight day, eight days out of 10, he will do the right thing, but two out of those 10, he won't. But he's just giving you evidence that he didn't start off well. That is a perceived failure. But how do you bounce back from that? How do you use that to your advantage to make sure that that eight days out of 10 becomes nine days out of 10. That nine days out of 10 becomes that 10 out of 10, right? I'm at the point where I will never, ever do that. And no offense to you, Ash, but I'm just further down the road. Like when I first heard you say that, Ash, I had to real, I had to reiterate to myself that, okay, I would never do this, but Ash in five years time will also probably never do this. But Ash has learned why that's not good for him. He's realized that that first part of the day is important to create momentum for the rest of his day. So what Ash has learned there is that to get to that nine out of 10, to get to that 10 out of 10, he has to realize what's wrong. And what Ash has done there is he's realized that that's not the right way of doing it because that can affect the rest of his day. Do you get what I'm saying there, Ash? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think you're right. I think in a way it kind of not ruined the day, but it may have been more challenging. You know, I was meant to go there do maybe six hours of work, leave leave there at maybe like, I don't know. Because yeah, I was meant to leave there at maybe six. I was, get there at six in the morning. I'd go until maybe two in the afternoon then I'd come home, kind of give myself a little bit of rest before work. But because I made that decision, it was almost like a punishment. And I think making that conscious decision in the morning sort of impacted the rest of my day. And that's sometimes what failure can do. I think that if you choose to fail like consciously, I think it's more so... The, the damage that it can have on your life, you might not realize it at that point, but I think in the bre in the broad scheme of things, if you keep making that conscious decision to fail on purpose, it'll definitely damage sort of the overall result that you might get in whatever you're doing. It might be for me, uni, 
for someone else it might be they might skip a workout and they're choosing to fail but there's often other times where you might not choose to fail say you're i don't know doing a business venture and it might go under it might sort of go bankrupt or something that's a failure you can't really you know decide if it happens or not it just happens but i think yeah, yeah. Th those those are kind of those are the kind of inevitable failures that happen just because of you being a human being you might have the intention to actually not fail right you might be consciously thinking i don't want this to happen but in the moment it does happen which is something that will happen in all aspects of life especially for high performance people maybe ash because he's not always competing uh with football anymore where that's definitely a more common thing it it's more of a conscious decision to fail for ash now which is it can definitely still be a mental challenge um and Val, if you want to quickly go on and, and give give a brief, you know, experience to where you have failed today and, and maybe try and change it to be a different anecdote towards Ash's one where it, it's it's a conscious decision uh, to, let's say, go against your promise. Um, but yeah, if Val, if you can give something uh, where our listeners can hear a, I guess, an unexpected failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no problem. First, I'm going to touch base on what Ash just said and uh, what you said about it again as well. Towards the 10 out of 10 days, you you programmed yourself to be a robot that you are not failing in that instance anymore. And that maybe Ash in a couple of years can also not intentionally fail anymore. I just want to say, I think it's totally normal to fail on, on, on a regular basis. I'm no machine. Uh, I, I go to training every single day, but I'm also not 100% motivated, for example, to go every day there are different external factors influencing this but as well for example yesterday i didn't have the best day i was tired i was feeling tired blah 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 my recovery score on whoops said it was fine but it's just my mental aspect that that uh, was influenced and going back to ash's perspective um this morning he he in he he failed he said but i don't think that was a failure. maybe he, he didn't feel 100 percent, which is okay once in a while that that thing those things happen but i think Failure is often uh, associated with mistakes. And I don't think failure is a mistake in that sense because from every mistake we can learn. We don't learn from mistakes that we do two times. A if we do one mistake and we learn from it, that's great. But if we do one mistake two times, that's just a dumb mistake and you intentionally took this mistake two times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think it was more so... In the, in the spur of the moment, sometimes you can make decisions that you might, uh, like for me. Yeah. And and that's totally fine to once in a while, like I said, to maybe reboot or uh, reschedule your, your things. Maybe for okay, for example, the day he decided to not go to university. But on other days, he will consciously figure out for himself, okay, I have to do this today. I have to push through. But I think that it also needs to be a difference between when you need to push and when not. For example, what Nick said at the beginning, you have to be able to sometimes give up. Many people always say you're never allowed to give up, but there are instances where you can give up sometimes to go into a different direction or to try out something else. I'm not saying um, Ash should give up on his university or whatever, but it sometimes gets overwhelming. And maybe this was an instance today where Ash felt like, uh, he just wanted to stay in bed and because he's juggling university work and uh, work at uh, outside work. Also on that Val, but going back just just quickly with the point yeah. of you you can give up. I, I agree with you, but that also comes with a reaction to giving up. It's not necessarily <laughs> giving up, it's readjusting. I'll just say that because giving up is quite a, a whole word where it's it's an end. It's a full stop where it's actually, like I said at the beginning, it's almost an, an accelerator to do the next thing and the next version of it. It's not a full stop. You get what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. And following that, my, my personal um, failure, if you want to call it like that, I don't think it is a failure because it's a learning experience. i tell you a very personal one. Uh, I've recently broken up with, with uh, my girlfriend. We've been in a longer relationship. And um, it hasn't been a instant breakup. It has been a a one which um, took its part over a couple of months, which I didn't notice at first. Um, but reflecting now, it showed me that I, I did some things wrong and I wasn't 100% there for her. 
uh, I wasn't in the right mindset myself. So I always say, if I can't provide, or if I can't be 100% there for myself, I can't be there for my family, for the loved ones, for my friends, etc. So I'm number one. I need to be okay myself first in order to provide back for the others. And I think in the, in the past year, I've neglected this a little bit because I, I went out of school. I finished my, my high school diploma. Uh, I've graduated. I, I've signed my first professional contract. I started my own business. And in my business, for example, I, st- I, I fail multiple times a day even. But I've learned from these mistakes. As I said before, I never try to make a mistake twice. Same goes with my football, my coach. I make a lot of mistakes. And that's totally fine because in training, I want to work. In the games, I want to work. Um, so that was a personal experience I had the last two months where uh, when I reflect back, maybe I failed in that relationship, but I now know what are my values in life, what do I want from a relationship. Um, so this is a positive, I would say, which what failure brought me. Yeah. Um, just, just on that note, I think that a, a future episode that we can definitely do is talking about being selfish because i think that what val said there with his own experiences um in relationships we do have to prioritize ourselves because the best the best way for us to start prioritizing others is after you've prioritized yourself now that is a very selfish way of thinking but the people who prioritize others over themselves before they even have actually made themselves the best version of themselves then that end result will not be good it just won't be anyway that's another episode that we can talk about failure is not just important it's essential it's essential why because failure is the only way to truly test your limits and push yourself to the next level you see when you're always succeeding you're not really challenging yourself yes sir you're just doing what you already know how to do but when you fail you're forced to confront your weaknesses and try again and each time you fail you're actually getting closer to your goal because you're learning what doesn't work. But here's the controversial part. I believe that success is actually overrated. When you always succeed, you become complacent and stop pushing yourself. Failure, on the other hand, keeps you hungry and motivated to improve. Think about it. Some of the most successful people in the world failed multiple times before they achieved greatness. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter manuscript was rejected by multiple publishers, but they didn't give up yet. They kept failing until they succeeded. So embrace failure. Embrace the discomfort and the uncertainty. Don't be afraid to take risks and fail, because that's the only way to truly push yourself to the next step. So uh, just quickly before I actually go into the next part, I think that that goes in perfectly with kind of how Val, you don't really see failures as failures. It's the way you perceive them to actually help you fall forwards, which is a topic that we've talked about many times here. And I think that that, that just there, Val, it, it completely aligns with everything to fa- like not failing, but falling forwards. Exactly. And I would say for, for me, fa- failure is not the right word. I would replace failure with learning. Yeah, big, big, 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. Because just just saying the word failure kind of puts a label on it. You can change that label and make it to whatever you want. So say, I don't know, you didn't you didn't get a chore on say that you wanted to do. That's not a failure. That's just oh, it's a learning probability. It's a learning opportunity. I can learn to do something different the next day. But anyway, we we'll get to the next topic. So the next topic is why is failure essential? Uh, I've recently picked up on a framework called opposite opposite thinking. Wait again, opposite thinking. It's <laughs> I, it's it's called like that. Yeah, it's called like that. Wait, wait, wait. Let me quickly uh, check something. That is, I'm saying it correctly. So I've recently picked up a framework called opposition thinking. It's basically positive thinking. You change the words or your, your thoughts that go through your mind. For example, negative thought, you immediately change to a positive. I would apply this framework to failure, the word failure. I would change it immediately to a new, better, positive experience. Like learning i want to learn if i fail i learn so this is what i believe um my framework is at the moment and which i'm trying to implement more and more in my life yeah no that's actually really good i really like that so the next topic will be why is failure necessary 
uh, why it's just inevitable and like the strategies that you can kind of build to sort of bounce back from failure. So talking from personal experience, I know obviously we've all been failures in life. We've all done things that made us fail. But one way that I sort of bounce back from failures that I make is I always ask the person, okay, say, I don't know, I'm not a professional footballer like some of these guys are on the podcast, but I play local league. So say I mess up on the weekend, I ask my coach straight away, what do you think I could have done better? Because I'm constantly in that sort of frame of learning all the time. I don't just want to stand like stagnant. Say I do something wrong that brings me down a bit. I'll ask the coach, yeah, like I said, how can I improve? What did I do? How can I do something better? Even in like uni, I get my feedback back, my feedback from the exam or something like that. I'll I'll ask the I'll ask the um the teacher straight away. What what could I have done? I read the feedback, what they say, this could have done better, this could have been better, this could have been better. And I use that for the next assignment. Or say I'm at work and I get some criticism or feedback. Or straight away, I'm just like, okay, next time I do this better. I make sure it's always better. I'm constantly, constantly learning. I think I think Nick and Val, um, I'm sure you could add into this, but I'm sure there's always ways that you're like your say failure is just sort of like a mindset, right? You don't want to be stuck at saying you failed. Like like Val just said then previously. He doesn't say the word failure. He said he was learning. So Nick, if you have anything to say about that, that'd be great. Yeah. So I think that for me, one thing that I've reiterated quite a lot throughout this podcast is actually having reason for the failure. Now that that kind of looks like, for me at least, I know that I embrace failure because I then understand what's wrong from that. And I want to go 100% with whatever I'm doing and, and when I say that, I'm not saying that in a cliche where you're saying, I want to do this with 100% effort. What I'm talking about is doing things with 100% conviction, whether it's wrong or right. You don't know what's wrong or right until you have, let's say, summarized and learned from the action. So let's say, okay, I'm kicking the ball with the inside of my foot and I'm trying to figure out what technique get me to kick the ball the fastest. And I'm talking about, okay, different angles of hitting the ball. I'm going to try and do this with 100% conviction every single time. I'm going to hit the ball with the inside of my foot. After one month of working on that, and I've reevaluated my assessment, and I've gone through, okay, I've been aware, I've assessed, and I've done all these processes. Now I can real. Now I can take the next step, okay? With 100% conviction, not doing it 50-50, trying, you know, 75% the inside of my foot, but I have that little bit of conviction on the other side, that 25% where I'm trying with my laces. No, 100% inside of the foot. Then the next time... So you're saying, you're saying, so you're saying based on, so you're not doing it just for effort. You're saying no matter what it is, you're doing 100% conviction. You're convinced. You're just committing to everything that you do. You don't know if it's right or wrong. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. So you have to be convicted in what you're doing because... When you have 100% conviction, there's no room for thinking, well, when I did it this way, I saw a little bit of improvement this way. Should I try and do this way this time or should I do this thing this way? And you have this back and forth with you. And I'm sure that you guys have had this back and forth with yourself. It might be someone telling you to do it this way, but you have this intuition, this untrained and un, un this just raw instinct in you to tell telling you to do it another way and you've got this 50 50 split now but what you need to do is have it 100 percent, and the next time it's 100 percent. when you're starting when you're starting to learn how to kick from your laces and then after trying that and you've realized that you've got two same results and then you reevaluate and you assess okay well maybe it's not the way i'm kicking the ball it's the way i am planting my foot before i even kick the ball right so this is what you need to do you need to do everything with okay sure 100 percent effort but with 100% conviction because you need to know what's wrong before you find out what's right. Yeah. So so say, Nick, you you have, I guess, let's say, let's call it failed. So let's say you failed in something, right, that you've been doing today. How would you personally bounce back from doing that? Yeah. So I think important thing is awareness, assessment, and action. I think that it's not a very straightforward process, but it's something that I do work on every single day. And yes, I have it in written form, but also in conscious thought and subconscious thought, because I've got to a point where I have trained my subconscious thought to automatically assess and reevaluate situations. 
Now that does come with its costs with overthinking and maybe I'm not being fully present in the moment, but that's something I'm still working on myself. So one, well, okay, I've got kind of six steps that actually I kind of take as Ash asked me then. So we'll go through learning from a failure or perceived mistake. It's to kind of help me avoid repeating similar or the same errors. I would first reflect and take time to realize what went wrong and be actually 100% honest because guys, I'm sure that, you know, from even experiences in your own life where you've, you've maybe tried to sugarcoat things where you don't want to be 100% honest with yourself, but honestly, be 100% true. And even when it really hurts, being 100% honest with yourself is the only way to move forwards and identify patterns and behaviors that led to that mistake. And then I would analyze the problem. So whenever it, whatever that root cause was, I'll try and understand what it was. And then I'll start to take responsibility. Everything that happened then, I did. No one else did it, okay? And that comes back to the point of doing something at 50-50. You need to do it with 100% conviction because if you don't, you've got someone else to blame. And we don't like doing that. You don't blame others. Everything that comes out of your mouth, everything that you do physically, everything that happens to you, everything that you do is a reflection of you. Other people may have influenced that, but at the end of the day, who did it? You. So you take accountability for that. So I take responsibility for everything I do. The fourth thing that I do is after analyzing that mistake and identifying the underlying issues, the root, the root issues, right? I make a plan and I address them. This will help me avoid repeating that same mistake in the future. And I also try to learn from others. I try to get feedback from people who saw me in that scenario. And I try and learn from others to see their own strategies, which may help them. I don't implement them straight away. I try and find my own, but I need to learn from them because if they've gone through something, that they've encountered in their life and that they've learned from, I will probably also go down it through. So I will also probably go through it myself. So I'm able to learn and identify it and recognize patterns and ways that they may have dealt with it that I can try and adapt myself. And then with all of this, I keep track of it. I keep a record for this. You can go through all of my, my learnings, my four A's, I call them. Okay. I go through my four A's. I create awareness, action, assessment. Okay, this is how I work on it. I take pride in tracking my progress and learning from mistakes is a continuous progress. It doesn't take two minutes. It doesn't take five minutes. It doesn't take a week. It doesn't take two weeks. It is retraining your habitual thoughts. Okay, keep a record, improve, refine, sculpt yourself every time. That's all I've got to say on that. Yeah, no, it's actually really good. I like the um sort of the the mindset you have with failure and not too worried about sort of making excuses. You kind of just realize, okay, this was me. I did it. I'm the one to take blame for it. There's no one else that did it for me. So I have to be accountable in the, in the things that I do. Val, I'm sure you'd be the same, but if you'd like to tell us, that'd be great. Just uh, touching base on what you just said with the hundred percent conviction, or if you're, uh, for example, I would say the biggest mistake, and I intentionally say mistake here is if you screw with yourself. If you are dishonest to yourself, if you, for example, sugarcoat anything, a failure for the benefit of yourself, of your self-perception, you have to be 100% honest with yourself if you fail, if you want to learn, if you want to uh, go two steps further and not two steps back. For example, you have to see the devil in the eye if, some, if you have a fear of something or if you failed at something big, you need to accept and take self-responsibility of what happened. Who else is going to change anything? Yeah. Because ultimately, who is controlling your body? It's you. You can control your own thoughts. You can control your actions. But you also need to control how you accept this. And the first part is accepting or taking self-responsibility of the failure, of um, the mistake, whatsoever. So don't screw with yourself. It, yeah. it, it also fucks with your self-consciousness. Self-esteem. Just quickly on that, Val. Um, can you give us a moment in time where you have had to actually confront that, you know, that really hard moment where you don't want to admit it. You know, you're fighting with yourself. What What's one of those moments? Because I have them all the time. I honestly have them all the time. 
it's like mental warfare at times, to be honest. Like it's always like you're fighting with yourself. You know what's right, you know what's wrong, but sometimes. Yeah, yeah. true. Um, I, I, I had this moment when I was younger, when I was still playing uh, in my under 16, 17, 18, 19 in my youth club, where um, self-doubt was a big issue for myself. Maybe it was a perceived on the outside, but internally I had self-doubt. And there was one crucial moment. I had a lot of injuries over the past years. And one big thing I can still remember was I thought that I couldn't defend. I'm a defender. I'm a center back. My job is to defend. And I thought I, I, I can't defend. I really told this myself. That's not even a crazy thought to have. It's not crazy. Yeah. I, I understand yeah, no. you on that. I understand you and on that. This is where I'm coming at. Self-doubt can be a killer in terms of your self-esteem. You're making yourself small, but you have to believe in yourself. And this, I figured out after going through this, after I failed, if you want to call it like that. I, it was a learning experience for me because now yeah. I'm working with more picturing. I'm working with more mantras. I'm working with more self-talk, hyping myself up or, or laughing more, uh, loving, loving to defend. I love to defend now. And... Um, it's just something I went through and I think many can relate to it. I think I think a few people sort of like obviously failure isn't just some broad scheme that we use for everything. Like there's gonna be huge failures, like there might be a loss of job and there might be small failures like not getting out of bed at the time you want. But I think the important part is if we if we return it back to, you know, football and sport, a lot of the professional athletes, like you got your Messi's, your Ronaldo's, pretty much everyone in like elite level sport. They got there, but they didn't get there without failing at least like a, a dozen million times, honestly, because you, you, I could look at any one of those footballers. They've all had injuries. They've all had setbacks. Like Jamie Vardy was like, what, third third division team, was it, Nick? Something like that. Was it non-pro? It was non-pro. And the, the fight back from that, if I was in non-pro, I'd be like, oh, there's literally no chance I'm making it. But the fight back he's had to kind of grind all the way up the English Premier League ladder and the divisions and everything, literally. What was it? Yeah, so basically just the best players kind of, they construct themselves after the failures. That's the important part. That's how they rebuild. And that kind of separates you from just the average person. The way that you kind of construct yourself and rebuild yourself after failing is the most important. So I think the sort of, the reason that the, the professional athletes kind of separate themselves from each other is they've essentially failed more than everyone else. So, so... A lot of the sort of top level athletes, no matter what it is, regardless of the sport, your Messi's, your Ronaldo's, your Tiger Woods, Tom Brady's, whatever, they've all failed in their way to the top. And I think that's really important to learn from like the way that they sort of build on their failures and they come back from their failures is ultimately what makes them the people they are. So obviously, you know, you, you've got failures that are bigger than some and smaller than some. So you might have maybe a loss of job, a loss in the family, something like that. And then your smaller failures might be I don't know, not having the right food in the morning, I guess. I don't know. I couldn't think of a small failure because they're just so irrelevant. But it ultimately, like, the best players are, are the ones that kind of construct the advantages and they kind of, re they, they bring themselves back to reality after a failure. They might, something terrible might happen, but they kind of reconstruct themselves. They bring themselves back to reality and they get on with the job. They know that the failures are inevitable. They're always going to happen, right? You can't just go through life without failures. And they just keep pushing through it. So Val, I don't know what you've got to say about that, but if you've got anything, any sort of insight, that'd be great. Yes, Ash, actually, just 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 to add on that, just before Val, just because this is an important thing to that. It's not just admitting to the failure or recentering back so that you know you admit that it's happened and you don't want it to happen again. It's actually creating the strategy so it doesn't happen again. Because without the action without the application, without the awareness around fixing it, you know, to actually make it not happen again, it doesn't just happen from self-awareness. It actually happens through strategizing an action plan to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, how that can actually be seen out is let's say, okay, let's let's go with, okay, th this one is, it's it's a very random one because it's got nothing to do with football, but let's say, Okay, my phone, I my phone dies, and I'm I'm in the middle of let's say the shopping center, okay, and my phone dies, and I've got no way of charging it. What 
can I do the next time to make sure that doesn't happen? Okay, easy fix. Bring a portable charger with me. Now, let's say I bring the portable charger with me wherever I go, but one time I forgot to charge it with me. Now, what I do there is, okay, I've, I've kind of failed again at a strategy that I've already tried to correct. Now, what we do is we try another approach. Okay, now, every Tuesday, I charge my portable charger so that for the whole week, I have my portable charger ready to go, it's with me, and my phone will never die. Okay, so we're kind of building on that failure. Now, if you see, if I never failed, I would never have had that strategy to make sure my phone never dies. Now, let's say worst case scenario, maybe your phone never died at the shopping center when, it, when you were in a safe environment. But let's say worst case scenario, you're in front of 75,000 people and you fail in front of them and you don't have a strategy to make sure that you come back for it. What happens then? It's a big failure. And now what, what, what we see at the top is let's go into Loris Carriers. Maybe he never failed enough to where it affected him. But in front of 75,000 people on the biggest stage in the world, he failed and he failed again and he failed again. You know why? He didn't have that strategy. Okay. Now that's a very extreme one. Okay. Maybe, maybe, you know, the top people who have even failed at that level before, and they might be able to deal with it. Maybe in that situation, when it really, really matters. Okay. Now in the whole perspectives of the world, and you know, you can do the whole, you know, when you zoom out of the world and it's a big 3D perspective, or does it really matter? Okay. No, it doesn't really matter. But for that individual and that individual's job, yes, it matters. Okay. Unfortunately, it does matter. But when you have the strategy and process to make sure you can be better for those mistakes or the failures, there's gold in that. Touching on that, Nick, um, I just want to add, uh, many people believe that the best players in the world, regardless of the sport, have become so because they have failed more than anyone else. Failure is a natural part of, the, of learning. And this goes, for example, for Lewis Cutters. I would say now confidently that he will never, ever make this mistake again that he did in the final. And I would also say that he didn't do these mistakes before in, in training or in games. Of course he does mistakes. He's normal. It, it's normal. He's a human. But in this situation, in front of 70,000 people, in the final of the Champions League, he unfortunately did two mistakes. And he will always remember. But we, as outsiders, don't need to uh, knock him down even further. He knows exactly what he did. He can just learn from it. We can help him positively. That's also another point. If someone fails, don't try to push them down even further. Knock them down. Try to help them out. Give them your advice or what's up. Continuing that, um, people who are able to embrace their failures, learn from them and push themselves to improve are the ones who will ultimately achieve great. Furthermore, it's important to recognize that not all failure are created equal. Some failures can be debilitating and cause individu and cause individuals to give up while others can be constructive and propel individuals forward. That's what I mean with falling forward. The best players are able to differentiate between the two and use constructive failures to their advantage. Val, brilliant point. One thing that I just want to add there is that people don't necessarily fail on purpose. You know, there are going to be moments where you are a human being and you just fail, okay? Let's say it's for that Loris Carius moment. There's no way that Loris Carius actually meant to let the ball slip through his hands what happened there it's maybe his preparation to let that happen as val said that probably doesn't happen to loris carius any other day of the week right that doesn't really happen okay but what happens is let's say the preparation maybe he was too hyped maybe he was too relaxed we don't know why there was a misjudgment in that moment for loris carius but that what we can establish from that is that second mistake that he made Okay, that's not necessarily a misjudgment of preparation. That one is a subsequent event from the initial mistake. Now, if Loris Carries made that one mistake, it would have been a very, very different night. But because he made those two mistakes, we can learn that he didn't have the strategy to bounce back 
from that mistake. Now, okay, I don't know Loris Carriers per personally. He may have had the strategy in place for those moments, but did it work? No. And again, it's a very extreme moment being in front of 75,000 people and testing if your worst case scenario action plan actually will work or not. But let's say he had failed many, many times before when it didn't matter as much as it did then. Maybe, just maybe, would he have a better chance of not making that second mistake? Yeah, I think it's mainly just, yeah, like you said, having those sort of strategies in place. So if you do fail, you kind of have a way to bounce it back from it, whereas some people might dwell on the failure, it might build up, it might get worse, and it might just eventually, you know, kind of consume you. So I know for a few people, you know, they've had failures in their lives and they've just kind of said, that's it, I'm done, I'm not doing it again, or there's been some sort of, like, real sort of pain in their life and they just kind of consume it. It becomes them, they get stuck in a rut. The people that, I'd say, I guess, um, kind of, become more successful than the others that are the ones that, yeah, like you said, have those strategies, you know, can perform when they need to. And if they do fail, then that's just sort of, it happens sometimes. Like you said, it's just, it's, it's, it's inevitable. It's, it really is inevitable. So some, some failures, you know, just, just, I don't know, you've got to bounce back from them or some failures you've kind of just got to not live with, but I guess you've got to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And I think. Honestly, guys, I think that's actually everything that we wanted to go through today. And just to wrap it up, I think that just a, a real key message to kind of, I like the word, reiterate to you guys, take this away, okay? Failure is not an end. It's actually just the beginning, okay? You see failure as something to be feared. It's something to be learned from. Every time we fail, we have an opportunity to reflect and what went wrong. And we can do things differently the next time. It's actually only through failure that we can discover our strengths and weaknesses and actually improve ourselves. Failure is necessary. And it's not just about personal growth, but failure can also lead to innovation and progress. That's important. Many of the world's greatest in inventions and advancements were born out of failures. For example, Thomas Edison, right? Everyone knows him. He failed thousands of times. Before he got that light bulb, it took him a lot of failures, okay? So every time we, f every time he failed, he learned, he adapted, he sculpted, he moved on to the next thing, okay? If he didn't do this, if he didn't go through all these failures, he wouldn't have found the solution, okay? So the next time you fail, don't give up. Use it as an opportunity to reflect, learn, and grow. You know, who knows, maybe your failure will lead to something great. But remember, success isn't measured by how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up and keep going. Okay, guys, sculpted, the whole message is refining. Failures in themselves are refinements, okay? They give you a reset to move forwards and go down the next endeavor, go down the next path, experiment, see if this works, see if it doesn't. Remember, you have to fail to figure out what's right. So with that being said, Today's episode, failure is necessary, okay? You need to fail, okay? And there's a few key points that I want you guys to take away from what we said. And there'll be some clips up on our Instagram. I want you guys to go follow the Sculpted Podcast on Instagram. We're also on TikTok now. Uh, not that I have a big ad for, for TikTok, but unfortunately, you know, if we want to grow, um, TikTok is unfortunately a way where we can see growth. But... Promote our stuff, guys. You know, we have had a lot of big guests already. Now, maybe not as many podcasts are able to get as good of guests as we've had already. Uh, so we are quite fortunate for that. But the only way that we can get even better guests on is if you guys help the podcast grow. So if you guys can share this with a friend, share this with some teammates, share this with your parents, anyone. We need more listeners. We need better guests. Not that our guests haven't been good. Just putting it out there. Our guests have been fantastic. But if we want to have more guests from more, you know, paths of life, if we want to get actors on, if we want to get, you know, top businessmen on, if we want to get the best in the world on, there's only one way we can do that, and that's through you guys. So if you guys can share this, repost this, do whatever you can, like the video, 
follow us on uh, Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify, do whatever you can, please help us to grow Sculpted because we've got some massive things coming soon. Hopefully by the time this episode is out, the Relentless series is well underway and you guys will be taking on Relentless as much as we are currently. And yeah, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for listening and we can't wait to put out some more episodes and um, yeah, we're really keen to get Sculpted going. So thank you guys for listening.